we have the body of Christ, amen? And, but the body of Christ, out of the body of Christ will come the bride. So not everyone in the body of Christ will become the bride. Does everybody get it? So we've got the bride and the body. Is everybody okay? It's not always how you begin, it's how you end, isn't it? Amen? In fact, the Lord even warned us in a parable. He talked about his servants that went out to invite everyone. And uh, when it was time for the wedding, a gentleman came in. I think it was a gentleman, I don't know. That did not have on wedding garments, but that his garments were defiled. And the Lord removed him and put him in outer darkness. So again, there is the body of Christ, but not in the body of Christ will come the bride. Not everyone will become the bride, depending where they are and are standing with God. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for your Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of, the, of, of Christ which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the, Gen that the Gentiles should be what? Fellow heirs of the what? Same body. And partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So we see here we, the, we are heirs of the same body in Christ Jesus. Now, when we begin to look at the body of Christ, can you lower this just a little bit? Thank you. A body was prepared by God for Christ. Amen? That body was going to be offered as a sacrifice so that there could be an exchange of body. So in this, there was an exchange of bodies. So there is a, a, a celestial and a terrestrial body. Amen. So when Jesus rose from the dead, and anyone, he left his spirit now to create his body. Does everybody get So people, when we become saved, we now become the body of Christ. But there first had to be an exchange of body. God created a body for Jesus. And that body was crucified and offered as a sacrifice so all humanity could enter into a new creation in the body of Christ. Is everybody with me? In the body of Christ. Not outside of the body of Christ. Okay. Go to Hebrews 10, verse 5. It's like a body exchange, you know. He was exchanging the bo his body so that others can enter his body. Verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings, and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ 
once for all. In other words, an exchange of body. It was an exchange. He offered up his body so that we could enter his body as a new creation. Amen? Physical body was offered as a sacrifice to those willing to become heirs of his body spiritually. Left on earth that he may express himself through the body or through us to the world now. Is everybody with me? Romans 12, 3. For I say through the grace given to me, which is God's plan, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. I always look at us as like blood vessels in the body of Christ, you know. But everybody has a different function in certain areas. Hallelujah. Having then what? G gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion of our faith. Or in ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, liberally, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is what? Good. <laughs> be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, even to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. And do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. That means he's going to reap. The God will avenge you. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We are many members in the body with different functions and callings. Don't try to fulfill somebody else's function or calling. Amen? Sometimes we want to be able to do all kinds of things. But God has not called us to that. You have a specific function and purpose in the body of Christ. And don't go by what you feel. You go by what we're told. Does everybody get it? You know, so many times people are well, this is my desire, but, you know, everybody, I have a desire. Well, all of us had desires to be many things. Amen? But it's not always that desire. Remember, we talked about the anointing and what brings the desire, but sometimes that desire isn't there yet. God just puts you in the place to begin to function. And as you begin to function, you begin to stay and expand that function. So what God wants you to wants us to do is in that function is to master it. Reach its highest level. But so many times many people are trying to do something else before they've reached their level. And and they become master of nothing. Amen. But they can do all, all kinds of things, but they're not mastered nothing. 
you know. So there are things that it's not if you want to do, it's what God says to do. Jesus confessed himself, Lord, if it's possible, let this pass me by. He did not want to go to the cross. But he said, not my will, your will. Do you understand that? I, I'm telling you, I don't think he desired to go to the cross. <laughs> but he did. Because he knew what he had to. It was, it, somebody was, it was his function. It was his purpose. A body was prepared for him to, for the what? The exchange. He was paying a price. He was willing to. So everything you and I do, there is a price to pay. That price is to deny ourselves and be obedient to what he wants us to do. So no matter where you are or what you're doing, you do it with all of your heart, all of your will, and all of your mind. Master it. And as you begin to master it, God will change the function. He'll prepare. He'll do something else. Or he may keep you in that function for the rest of your life. I never desired to be a pastor. I didn't desire any of this. My desire was preach on the street corners. <laughs> I just wanted to get an RV and cruise. Been in the same block for 30-something years. But not my will, his will. Amen? <laughs> Glory. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Let's grow a little further. Go to Colossians chapter 1. You know, so many people take so many things of what people say. You know, and then they take it and they go, oh, this is it. Um, I've, I've had people tell me they're prophets, they're apostles, they're all kinds of stuff in the body of Christ. And they just are self proclaiming. And so they prophesied over someone. Praise God, it doesn't make us a prophet. Amen? So you helped start a church, it doesn't make you an apostle. <laughs> But people fall into functions that God hasn't placed them in. And they usually don't last. Or they get exposed or something happens. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. You know, we were always told as younger, be somebody. You need to be somebody. Right? You need to get an education. You need to get a job. You need to make money. Then you can be somebody. But God already predestined us to be somebody. We are his children. Amen. And, and, and that, you know, um, so many times, I, I, I mean, I know many people that have gone to school and done all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and unfortunately, they're successful in the wrong assignment. Terrible place to be. Because God didn't call them to there. But all things will work to the good. Amen. But there's a difference between that 30, 60, and 100 fold. And we want the full reward, not a partial. Hallelujah. Colossians 1.19, let's speak it. Everybody there? For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him. Well, the things on earth are things in heaven, having made peace to the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your thoughts or your minds by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Where did he reconcile? In the body of his flesh through death. Does everybody understand that? This is such a powerful verse. I'm going to read 21 again with you. And you who once were alienated in enemies in your thoughts or minds by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death so that he can present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed 
here, here it is, if you indeed, therefore, if you what? Continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now, so here it is. He says, man, okay, if, as, long as, you don't, uh, as long as you don't blow it, amen, you, you're going to stay there. You'll stay in that position. Enemies, we are enemies in our thoughts, but God reconciled us into the in his body. That was a sacrifice. That was an exchange that was made through the sacrifice of his body. Romans 7, 4. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the what? Body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the law having died to what we were let, held by so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Wow. Not in the oldness of the letter. Praise God. Dead to the law, to the body, for the exchange. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, and another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Now remember when Jesus took on the sins of mankind, it was sown in corruption. Amen. There was the only way he could get into hell was to have a body of sin. It is, then it is raised in incorruption. It was sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It was sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust and as the heavenly man so are also those who are heavenly as we have borne the image of the man of dust we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot enter, inherit the kingdom of God nor does corruption inherit incorruption behold I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall change I'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible is put on incorruption, and this mortal is put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise God. Romans 8, verse 9. It, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. 
And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are called what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, this is where he says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, in this, the Spirit dwells in our relationship as the temple of God, as the members of the body. Amen? Go to Ephesians 4, and verse 1. Speak it, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling or your function with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edify edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the anointing, or Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. The edifying of itself in love. One body, one spirit. Remember, that's why he says, he talks about, you know, we do not live in the flesh. Don't, don't live a life of the flesh. Because it was crucified. Remember, Jesus took that body and crucified it because he took sin on, his, on that body that he created. So he's now, that same body of sin still, that it was exchanged so that you and I could escape the body of sin, the members of the body of sin, and step into the body of Christ. Amen? So the Bible tells us that if we are led by the Spirit of God, the flesh is crucified. So the flesh stays crucified just like Jesus was crucified. The same Thing, except for he made the price for me and you is the exchange to be made that his flesh was crucified so that ours could be crucified if we are led by the spirit amen if we're not led by the spirit then the flesh is ruling our life hallelujah glory Ephesians 5 verse 3 
But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetousness man, covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with these empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? Days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Oh, hallelujah. You know, in this you've got fallen humanity. <laughs> the fallen human humanity itself has been, had an opportunity to turn into the divine life only by the cross, only by the body of exchange. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of us, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that you, your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is of one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Wow. Hmm. The body, we are the temple, the body of exchange, Jesus Christ's body of exchange so that you and I could have a new body. Now, the Bible tells us that in his promises of covenant, there are daily benefits. Amen? He says, forget not, forget not my benefits. Who forgives our iniquities, heals our diseases, crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen? Rescues our life from destruction. We knew that our youth like the eagles and put good things in our mouth. So all of these things are promises through the covenant. But there had to be a sacrifice of covenant. There had to be a price paid. So he created a body that he could offer up in exchange so that we could come out of our fleshly body and have dominion over it so that as we are led by the Spirit of God, our flesh is crucified and we can fall under the benefits of promise and covenant. You know, so many times we don't hold on to these things. We easily drift from them. We give up too easy. We allow the flesh and the emotion to overtake the promises of God. And we really need to start breaking through more and more and more in all these areas. 
But, you know, remember, Jesus is coming back for a blemish-free bride. Amen? So out of the body will come the bride. But those are those who stand, who are steadfast, who are faithful all the way to the end. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 25, verse 1. kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. So a virgin is one that's been washed by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. So he's talking about the whole of the body of Christ. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming again. This is an expression of the whole body of Christ where the wise ones were considered the bride and the fool foolish ones were not. Amen? Luke 10, verse 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted. She was what? Distracted. With much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Wow. Again, this is the difference between the body and the bride. Many people in the body think that serving is going to do it. When it's relationship. Does everybody get it? The bride is associated. Listen, before people get married, they usually have a relationship. They just don't walk up to one another and say, hey, we're getting married today. There's usually some kind of relationship building. Amen? And they find out if really this is truly the one or not. Then sometimes, before they even choose that, they can get distracted. They can find that serving can distract instead of relationship. That's why he said she chose the right thing. She was listening to him. There was a relationship building there. The marriage is always associated with a strong relationship. Amen. Not a lust affair. Amen. Sometimes, you know, because love is a choice, in marriage, love builds. There isn't a high climax of love and all of a sudden, if there's a high climax of love, all of a sudden it's like, oh, no. Then that, because they're dealing, they're living by feeling. And you can't live by feeling. Love it grows. It strengthens. There's trust. When we talked about the love of God being peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So in this, Mary chose 
And Martha chose. One chose to serve, one chose relationship. And that's exactly what's going on in the body of Christ. Now, there's relationship, then service. Not service, then relationship. There's a difference. Amen? So there should be relationship with service of honor. Not service without relationship. So that's why many, the Lord tells in his parable, he said, many are going to come to me and say, Lord, Lord. Many, and they're going to say, well, we did all of these things because they did nothing but what? Serve. But they lost relationship. And because they lost relationship, they got, astra they got distracted. And they began to become, pick up things that were offensive to God. And the Lord said, you practice lawlessness. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their word to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a what? Bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. It's rising from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end. And there's nothing hidden from his heat or his presence. In other words, we're at a time right now where the bridegroom is about to be released. But remember, the bride is being prepared to depart from the body. But before Jesus comes, we know he's going to flow through the body. Amen. So there's a preparation. There's a multiple preparation in everything that's, being ha that's getting ready to happen. Go to Joel chapter 2, 15. Blow the trumpet of Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her what? Dressing room. Ooh. So we're all being prepared, cleaned up, scrubbed up, smelled up, sweetened up. Getting ready to come out of the dressing room. Amen. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep before the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to the reproach that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to them, behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them, and I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. Is that getting ready to happen or what? Amen. I'm telling you. So that's why I said, now, of course, blow the trumpet. Why? Because the next feast is the Feast of Trumpets. And that's going to be in September. It'll be also the end of Jubilee. So the Feast of Trumpets, which is the beginning of the new year, the Jewish calendar, is associated not only with the rapture of the church, but it's a rapt uh, uh, associated with a new beginning, a new year. And so we are coming to the end of Jubilee on, on that date, also at the beginning of a new year. So we're going to hear the trumpet is going to blow. It's not going to be about the rapture, but it's going to be about the release of the anointing of God through the body of Christ in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to close at Revelation 22. The bride and the groom are going to become united here shortly. But the bride is being prepared, coming out of her dressing room. And the bride will come out of the body.
You know, so many times people think it's about how much they know. It's not about how much we know. It's about who you know. Amen? <laughs> I read my Bible all day long. Do you know him? No, no, no. I read my Bible. Do you know him? Are you sitting at his feet? Is there a relationship? Amen? That's what he wants. Relationship. Do you know him? Remember, Jesus said that to his disciples. Who did they say that I am? He was asking them, do you know me? Do you really know me? Amen? Hallelujah. Revelation 22, verse 12. Let's speak it. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and idolaters. Whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say what? Come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from those things which are written in this book. He who testifies to this thing says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen and amen. Did you notice that it says, In the spirit and the bride say come. Amen? Because the bride's home. Hallelujah. But right now, the bride that is here is saying, Come also. Come. Come into the kingdom. Come into the body. The exchange Jesus made. Is phenomenal. Never lose sight of that. That's how it all started. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the preparation and the bride that's coming out of the dressing room to meet the bridegroom. Lord, in the meantime, we wait on you. We ask for your continued counsel, correction, and direction, and your preparation that we may be dressed up and prepared, adorned, and ready as a blemish-free bride to be presented to the bridegroom in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.